So last time, we continued our trek towards the beacon that Grailnor had his, uh, his brain pointing to. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Last time on Dragon Ball Z. No, uh, and then we found out it was a uh, an illithid spell jammer or something, except there weren't any illithids on board. There were those weird, cute little squid guys. And they gave us a tour, and we helped them fix their engine, and Resnia had a personal crisis, and Grailnor gave me, uh, what's that thing? Uh, fuck. Or he didn't give it to me, he gave everybody the guns. Well, he, he gave the second gun to Resnia, he kept one for himself. And then he gave me a seizure, Jesus. And then on the way back, Grailnor was tragically eaten by some kind of snow turtle. And that's the... Yeah, and the snow turtle all blew up inside. Yeah, snow and then it ate one of the guns nice and a bunch of the ammo and exploded. Indeed, and so we resume in the snow-covered valley here in the spine of the world. Yeah, we got to make a beeline to Brinchander to get Grilnor back. That is first priority. So we have grabbed his things, or what's left of him, and I believe we are making our way there. Indeed. You all begin to make your way back to Brinshander. And after about three and a half days of travel, you were able to return to Brinshander unmolested by any of the horrors of the tundra. Huzzah! Lucky bastards. I forget the cleric's name, but, um... Yeah, we're gonna find out, see if we can uh, help Gornor. Somebody post something else so I don't have to look at that gif. Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. Hmm, Slytherin. All right, but I'm guessing you guys are going to the house of the Morning Lord? Indeed. All right, yeah. You head to the house of the Morning Lord. You can see, uh, you can see, uh, Cooper, uh, Knobberknocker kind of bickering with, uh, the priestess here. What do you do? Yeah, well, yeah, we asked him if uh, he can help our friend and uh, describe what happened to him and what's left of him. Yeah, yeah she, uh, she looks over the body. Oh, yeah, hey, this is a rather disintegrated looking fellow. Yeah, there was multiple explosions. A ball he was eaten. It was pretty uh, gnarly. Ghastly. Well, I assume that you brought him here. You were hoping to bring him back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I, I believe we're good for the money. But, uh, that part there is good. Cost about a thousand gold. And that being said, uh, I'm only doing this here because, uh, well, your group's been really good to the Dale, so I'm going to help you out here. But uh, try not to, you know, try not to die too often. I'm a little limited on my scrolls for doing this. Oh. All right. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely not on the list dying, but uh, we'll try to be more careful. Thank you. You see her kind of go uh, to a uh, door at the far end of the uh, room by the narthax of the uh, chapel. Kind of opens it and walks down. About 20 minutes later, she reemerges with a scroll. All right, now. Uh, so, do you have the gold there? Yeah, it's a thousand, right? Indeed, one thousand gold. Yep, so we hand her a K, and uh, we'll have Grenor stuff on the ready. More ready. Has you take Grenor's body over to the altar. Unfurls the scroll and uses it. You'll see before you in a glow of golden light the ash that composed Grailnor's body begin to moisten and reform and draw itself to his skeleton as his body is restored to life. Oh, God. Yeah, that's the reason why I had his stuff ready, so that way he wouldn't be like that. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Glad to see you're doing uh, much better. Say, so, uh, you died violently. Uh, here's what uh, we could scavenge from uh, the remains and just hand him the stuff back. I guess it is true what they say about gnomes. What do they say? <clears throat> that their hats are compensating for something, eh? It's not a matter of how big it is, but how you use it. Yeah, it's not even up yet. <laughs> well, you better put those back on. Yeah. All of his clothes got disintegrated by the explosion. He'll have to go buy some. So he just walks. He's like, all right, I'm going to go buy some clothes now. And he uh, just walks. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. A, a spare set of uh, cold weather clothes on me. So you can have those. All right. All right, well, I'm beat. I'm going to go sleep. Mm -hmm. That might be nice. Yeah, we're also here in Bryn Shander, so if you need some, like, other stuff to buy to compensate for the stuff that uh, was lost, now's the time and the place. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a list, figuring out how much I... He has his own gold, so, you know, he, he's probably got it covered. All right. Well, we got plenty of party funds if you need anything. Yep, I just took 1,000 out of those. I know, I marked it down. Ah. Oh, well, thank the, the priestess, was it? Uh, for her help? Mm -hmm. uh, before I forget, what's the name? Oh, let me write it down.
Mishan. Is that how you say it? Mishan. We thank her for the help, and then um, this is probably the time when we figure out uh, what what hook do we want to follow next. Hell, you don't even need to follow the plot hooks. You can just decide to go somewhere. This isn't Skyrim. We can't do that. That's illegal. We could go bullet hunting. I kind of want to go great cat hunting, honestly. Get us all pelts. Um, not pelts. A uh, bunch of clothing made by great cats. There's the rumors that we got, that we haven't known so far. We already did the first one. What would I just love how the, the way these rumors are, are like worded, is that they're practically assaulting you with them, like... Here's the plot hook as they whack you with a newspaper. What would yeah. be closest to Brenchander? Oh, go ahead, Dragon. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Dragoon. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, the uh, priestess was bickering. I wonder if, like, she needs anything and like uh they did resurrect two of us can I ask if they need any help they tell you that they don't need any well never mind then let's go Uh, have we heard any rumors of reindeer herds nearby? Nearby? Mm, no big ones. Those would be out east. A ways. I heard stories about uh, some kid grandma got ran over by a reindeer once. We could do the Goliath quest. Where's this? Spine of the world? Yeah. Oh, that was close or... to where we are, were, correct? That's where we were, yeah. Yeah. So, you know those mountain ranges on the south, like, entire half of the map? That's the spine of the world, the whole thing. Right where it says spine of the world. Yep. All the mountains you see are part of the spine of the world. Do we know more or less where the clans are? Or is it just an entire loft of area that they might be? I'll need a second to check the map. We could also try to deal with the Arcane Brotherhood off in Revel's End. Oh yeah, yeah. that was kind of important. Do I know where Revel's End is? Give me a second, let me get to the map. I got a special map. All right, so Revel's End would be located uh, from the sounds of it uh, due north of the Black Cabin. Like he'd be heading straight up towards the coast. No one around here really goes out there all that often, so they don't really have great details for you. Is that near uh, Lonelywood? Yes. It's like so north of Lonelywood. Yep. You can go there and probably get better information. The thing about giants would be going up the Shangri River. Uh, 
One second. Pete or Andre, I don't suppose you have that map, do you? Uh, which map? The the regular I post- map. I posted it. Yeah. Yeah, Mick Mc posted. I mean, I still have it. Yeah, this so you, got, you guys can. So, the uh, the giant Yarlmoot that would be upriver from Bremen. Revelers End would be like due north of Lonely Wood, near the coast. What was the other question? I think that was covered, right? Yeah. And the... The Goliaths would be Spine of the World somewhere in the mountains near the uh, Regged Glacier. So what do we think? Arcane Brotherhood sounded dangerous. We should probably uh, investigate what's going on with that. All right. When you say due north of Lonely Wood, do you mean on the coast, like near Lonely Wood, or on the opposite coast to the like to the north? On the coast, north of Lonely Wood. Uh, kind of closer to the top edge of the map. Oh, the north coast, right? Not yeah. Okay. to go to uh, investigate that uh, red wizard. I can scarcely hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Arcane Brotherhood? Is that where we're going? I'm also interested in um, what was it, the Goliaths or the Frost Giant? Doesn't matter to me, really. The, The Arcane Brotherhood probably has cool magic stuff. That's what I'm thinking. The Arcane Brotherhood probably also has dangerous magic stuff. Well, we're not going to the Arcane Brotherhood. We're going to what I assume is a prison. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, He has leads about the Arcane Brotherhood, though, right? If the rumors are to be believed. Yeah. Are we going to have to wait for uh, exhaustion? Does resurrection impose that? Yes. Yeah. So we wait three days and then take off at the fourth? Was it raised dead or resurrection that they used? Resurrection. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it takes four days to completely go away. So yeah, if we want to spend three days in town... And they only have two more scrolls of that that they can use. Well, while we're in town, we should make sure to buy Grail or some new crampons and snowshoes. I think he's got it covered. Yeah. 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 Once I got Sir Killabot after that first night, I'm, I'm good. Could you, uh, you subtract uh, 50 gold pieces from the current party funds? I'd like to get some more herbalism stuff to get more uh, healing potions to make some over here. It's fine with me. I was thinking of using the three days of downtime to scribe a second level scroll. Yep. scroll of lesser restoration in case we need it. Nice. 
I'll make us uh, three healing potions for the downtime. Okay. Anyone else doing anything weird for uh, or costly during downtime? Uh, I was going to try and talk to the uh, to the speaker to get us. Ruffles End is a prison, right? I would know that. I'm trying to make sure that when we get there, they don't just tell us to fuck off. Give me one second to familiarize myself with this. Well, so what you'd know about uh, Revel's End is that it is controlled by the Lord's Alliance. And it is uh, typically used to imprison offenders that have political connections that would make incarceration at a different facility less dependable. So we're talking uh, like spies or um Pretty much anybody that, if you held them at a lower detention facility, might have ins on that facility. Right. This is maximum secure. I don't quite want to say it's it's that place out in uh, Colorado that's really famous, but uh, it's, it's kind of like that. Uh, what's the Lord's Alliance? A faction. Yeah, it's, that's a faction from down south. It's composed of Baldur's Gate, uh, Mirabar, Neverwinter... Silvery Moon, Waterdeep, um, Yartar, and then a number of towns and uh, a dwarven stronghold of uh, the Mithril Hall. Okay, that's important, because I was going to try and like pull a favor with one of the speakers to get in there, but I'm guessing that wouldn't work, because they don't really answer to them. Correct. This is a separate political entity. Okay. That well, shit, that just means we'll have to talk our way in. We're good at that. Oh, so this is more like we're all Cuban and, and this is Guantanamo Bay. Yes. Yeah, you're Cuban, this is Guantanamo Bay, and technically speaking, the part that it's built on, you don't actually control, or most of Icewind Dale for that matter. Yeah, the Lord's Alliance has stopped paying rent on the land, but they just refuse to leave. Yeah, I wouldn't quite put it that far. It's more that Ten Towns doesn't have the interest or political capital to enforce a control of the RUC on the map. So where is it again? Hmm? Revel's End, where is it? Oh, we said it's uh, on the coast of the Sea of Moving Ice, directly north of Lonelywood. Well, not quite directly. Okay, so... Roughly. You see where it says Icewind Dale, right? Yeah. Go east to the coast. Ah, oh, okay. okay. I'll be right back. Also, I'm going to need a moment. We recently cleaned up the office space, and I seem to be missing some of my materials.
All right, I found it. Well, unless anybody else can think of something that's going to get us in there, then I think we got to just go for it. I mean, it, I, I, I might have sort of accidentally contributed to putting some people in there. Okay. Um, let's just say, uh, even if they did allow visitors, they probably wouldn't want to talk to me. But we could always try that angle. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Gilbert, did you uh, hear me what I said about how I might have sort of accidentally put people in there? Yeah, I heard. Okay. I wasn't sure if you'd grabbed your stuff yet. Yeah, because of that background thing. Yep, yep. I, I've I found my stuff. Um, I'm I'm mostly just kind of reading ahead while uh, you guys figure out what you're going to do. How you're going to do it, the route you're going to take, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Ah, well, as for route... Probably be easy is just for us to go up to uh, Tourmaline and then uh, skirt the uh, Lonely Wood. Then head north to it. God, yeah. you guys hate that town, don't you? <laughs> what? I said, Tur God, you guys really hate that town. What going to Wood? Oh, Lonely Wood. We you never did. Uh, it's the way. Get the quest. Yeah, we never even used. It's just not <laughs> like yeah. Unless we're going there as a destination, it's really not on the way to anything. Because getting out of Lonely Wood to head north to the Sea of Moving Ice is would involve having to go through the woods. Which is a tactical nightmare. Yeah, they call it Lonely Wood for a reason. Hmm. Ever actually brings up an idea. If we can't uh, talk our way in, maybe doing some local favors here would allow us to enter. Well, we gotta have a good reason in the first place. Yeah, but you wanna stop the bad people. Um, More specific. I'm working on a sequel. <laughs> That's more like it. Old. What if we go in there and say that we believe that this guy has information that could lead to the uh, something? Wasn't um, Arcane Brotherhood trying to find some technology that would dispel the cloudy weather? Well, what they were trying to find is that thing that uh, that Grailmore had, wasn't it? Yeah. It starts with an M, M something. The Mithlandier. Yeah. Do you still have that, or did that get destroyed? The device itself was rendered useless. I had a really nice set of blueprints for making one on parchment that uh, got turned to ash when everything exploded. Oh, that's a shame. Along with, along with that uh, damaged copy of Magical Wonders of Netheril. And my playing cards. And my maps. 
Mythalar. It was called Mythalar. And my potion of invisibility. Things happened. Yeah, and having uh, this artifact would be nice for Icewind Dale, you know? So it's not so icy anymore. Well, then it would be not so nice if the Arcane Brotherhood had it. Yeah. And at this point, they're the only people we know of who would have it. So it's kind of important that we talk to that guy, actually. Well, as soon as uh, as Gilbert is ready, I think we would get on our way to uh, to Termalane. Yep. 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 I just have to uh, review some of this. You are ambushed by bandits along the way, but they're not bandits. They're sentient owl bears. All right. They have us surrounded. Those poor fools. <laughs> Oh, that's right, I wanted to make an owlbear coat, and that fucking dragon, ugh! Oh, don't worry, I'm sure we'll run into plenty of owlbears. Yeah. And I'm really hoping for some owlbears and cray cats. That'd be nice. Like, I really want to accent this uh, outfit with some feathers. All right. One moment I plot the time to get to there. All right, so by my dungeon uh, master's mathematics degree, I have determined that it will take 4.3 days to reach uh, this destination. Okay. I have decided I want to do something when I'm in Termaline. I'm going to try that thing I wanted to try after all. What? I'm going to try and get the, uh, get the speaker of Termaline to give us something saying that we can go in there. I, I, I don't take your meaning. What? 
I'm just trying to get like a piece of paper with a stamp on it that says we need to talk to the guy in Revel's End, whose name is Valish Gant. Alrighty. So, the first la So what have you guys... Are you guys doing anything with those, what, three, four days of downtime? Well, we have more downtime? I mean, from Grelnor being, uh, you know... Oh, yeah, the healing potions. Yeah, yeah, we waited three days and then we left. Okay, three days, then you left. Alright. So it takes you guys six hours to make it to uh, Tourmaline. Kind of during the end of the day, uh, you said that you wanted to speak with their speaker about having a reason. Yep. So I'm going to try and go to the uh, the place where the speaker is because I don't remember what that's like in this village. It's like he has his own building, I think. He does. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go in there and see him, and I'll explain the situation to him. No. Give me a persuasion check really quick. Certainly. And what you want is uh, like an official document saying that you need to speak with this guy? Yeah. Well, I know the... Uh... None of the speakers of Ten Towns really, like, control what goes on in Revel's End. But I'd like him to make an official request for us to be able to talk to him. Ooh, all right, there, eh? I'll, uh, I'll write you up something. Much appreciated. Don't, don't do anything stupid while you're there. Seriously, we don't, we, we, we don't need issue with the Lord's Alliance. Do not cause a diplomatic incident, okay? Understood, eh? Understood. All right, here you go. And he gives you a formal letter. It is sealed. Wax stamp and everything. Perfect. I'll hold on to that. Oh, what's this guy's name again? Our uh, to Uh, yes. Aris Mastu. He's a half orc. All right, I'll hold on to that, and then if the day is ending, we'd probably spend the night in Tourmaline and then set out again. Indeed. And thus you begin your journey out into the Dale at the beginning of the next day. All right. So which of you would like to uh, be the party's executioner? Ooh, I'm good at that. Indeed, roll a d8. All 
All right. So about halfway through your day of the first day of travel, roll a d20. Ah. You guys see a oddly familiar looking sight. You can you can see off in the distance what would look to be a uh, a large polar bear sliding along its belly through the uh the snow dunes of Icewind Dale. Is this bear following us? Is this is this the same bear? Uh give me an insight check at disadvantage. Mm. Actually, there's a while. Mm. Give me a perception check, actually. Give me a perception check at disadvantage due to the okay. distance. It's about 200 feet from you. Oh, wait. Could, could I get closer? Like, try to sneak my way closer to, like, get a better look? I'd like to do that instead. Uh, sure. Give me a stealth check. And then I do the perception check thingy. That is, if it doesn't notice me and tries to maul me. All right, well, you get up to about 120 feet from it. You can see it more clearly. Oh, I found a gif of it. Okay, can I do the check now, flat? Or do I have to get closer? Flat, flat check. What the fuck is this image and why is it so funny? And very creepy. Well, that's my perception check. Just kind of stare at this feller. All right. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it's the same polar bear. It just looks like it's enjoying belly sliding through the snow. Do I suspect that this is not some sort of elaborate disguise? Like, are the movements natural? Give me an insight check. Yeah, it looks pretty natural to you. Okay, I, I back away. Yeah, I'm just going to leave the thing be. All right, cool. I guess it's a common thing in Icewind Dale for... Uh, Polar bears to do that. All right. I'm guessing you guys are just. Yeah, no? Yeah. You so cut off, but I assume going. yes. Yeah, we keep going. All right. You guys continue on. You take your, your rest. And another day begins. Underdark, another D8. I'm just waiting for that polar bear to be doing counter. Sorry, say again. Uh, what D20 for me? Um, you said a D24. D20 for me, please. Ah, I, 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 you like cut off like right after four. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's the other D24. All right, guys. Oh, uh, all right. So, uh, what exactly is your watch order? As you bunk down for the night on the second day. I'll take first. The elf will take the first two. I'll take third. Fourth. Please post. Mr. Wish character's name again? Gregor!
All right. Well, on the second night, you all bundle up for uh, what's looking like it's going to be a long and chilly night as a blizzard has sweeped in. Grelnor, your rather frigid watch has gone off quietly enough, other than the howling wind. Gregor. Yes. Yes? All right. So you begin your watch, the blizzard still raging around you. And through the howling winds, you can faintly hear a voice kind of whispering out to you. This is the doom that awaits you all. This is the fate of any who dare to claim what is mine. Behold the final light. And you can see a flash of light emanate to the west. A pale blue light. Show yourself, monster! Her. All right. Gregor is going to stand and draw his saber and point towards the thing. Coward! Face me! This is a part where, like, you're shouting, Alarm! Alarm! This is one of those moments where we have to... He is very up. loud. He is very, very loud with this. It's no surprise. Yeah, it's, he's very loud. Fine throw. Because... What you see kind of uh, step through the snow that's blowing into your eyes. A very familiar looking sight. You see four of them. Uh, God doing... damn it. Gambling through the howling snows. <laughs> Do me a favor. Everybody roll a niche. No, you know, there goes my net one. Or my net 20. All right, Gregor, you hear that voice, see the flash of light, and these creatures shamble out of the dark. You said you're shouting, trying to wake up your uh, compatriots? Yes, I am. All right. I don't suppose any of you have the alert feat? I, in fact, do. All right. Same. Are you the only two with the alert feet? Sounds like it. All right. Gregor also has it, of course. The two gnomes and the elf. The two gnomes and the elf. All right. So we'll just have you two as not surprised. Resnia and Tuna, you two will count as surprised for this. All right. Uh -oh. All right. Gregor? All right. Me. Okay, um, hold on a second. Uh, uh, okay, so there's how many of these things? Four? How far apart are they? Four of them. They are each ten feet apart in kind of a semicircle. But ten feet. Yeah, ten feet apart. Could I move to catch all of them? In a line? 
as I said, they are in a semicircle. And they are currently 60, sorry, 50 feet away. They're 50 feet away. No, you, I'm pretty sure you don't have the movement speed to get them in, in the line. Okay, can I get two of them in that, five, five foot wide? It's five foot wide. I'm trying a lightning bolt. Now, yeah, it's 100 yeah. foot long and it's five foot wide, so I'm trying to catch some of them. Yes. Two of them is something you could get in the line. What's your moving speed? Uh, 40. Or 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. No, 40, actually. If I bonus action, it's 40. If I bonus action, my blade song, it gives me 10 foot of movement speed, so it gives me 40. So, yeah, 40. You do not quite have the movement speed there to be able to get two of them in a, in a line. All right, then. Okay, how, how the nearest one is 50 feet from me? Yep. Well, all of them are roughly equidistant to you at 50 feet. Okay, well, then. Let's go with the first one, then. I'm going to... Uh, uh, no, wait. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to draw my saber as a bonus action and enter blade song. And then... I am going to action cast haste on myself. It gives me one more action, don't it? No, it gives you a very specific use of an action. I believe it's an attack, a dash action, or a disengage action. Okay, well then, it doubles my movement speed. It should be on your face. Me... Read it. Yeah, I see it. It gives me double my movement speed. And I get an extra... Action. I can take the attack, dash, or disengage. So I am going to dash up to the or to run up to this thing since my movement speed is doubled, and I'm gonna give it a love tap. Bitch. Fuck with uh, me. Which one would you prefer? Ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, or one o'clock? Uh I don't wanna get surrounded, so ten o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock. I guess, yeah, 10 o'clock. Is that 10 o'clock would put you into this concave semicircle, right? Like, Oh, I, I want to face one, not go in the middle of the circle. So you want like, the far left flank, flank one? Yeah, yeah, he wants to outskirt it to the left yeah. side. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah. What they said, that, yes. All right. So you go to the guy on the far left. All right. All right. Hang on here. Let me make sure I got all this. That's right. Does Hayes give me advantage to attack or no? Yes. No. Advantage on attack. Okay. So I'm going to attack it. Inflict violence. Eleven points of damage. That is, if the twenty-three hit, it wouldn't hit me, but it might hit him. Twenty-three hits. Eleven points of piercing damage. All right. And I'm done. All right. Dragoon, you wake up prone on the ground inside your tent. You heard uh, Gregor shouting a warning. You can just make him out through the blizzard. Um, how far away are the axe beaks? I would assume you guys are keeping them with the party, so probably right outside your tent. Yeah. 
Can I just get out and get on one? Yeah. Possibly. And Let's see. It costs half your movement speed to get up. To walk outside. I don't believe you'd be able to mount up in the first turn. Well, darn. Then I guess I'm going to have to fire a... Let's go with a firebolt. Now nah, let's go with the chromatic orb at the uh, damaged one. All right. One second before you make that roll. Oops. Because blizzards are funky, and there's something I got to check there. Okay. I had to be sure on that. All right. Yeah, your attack roll's fine. That does not hit. I'm wiping, like, the sleep out of my eyes and, like, trying to get onto the axe beak while fighting a blizzard. It's just it's just too much stuff, and I can't really aim. Yeah, yeah, you got a big old uh, you know, lump of snow in your eye there. Tuna, you are awake and surprised. Sorry. Yeah, you're also awake and surprised. Grailnor, you are awake and prone on the ground. All right. I stand up. And then I get on my bot. All right. And then the bot... Um, this is probably the first time you know I've had a chance to post it. Uh, remember how last time I had the mushroom and I was like rebuilding the Sir Killabot? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a bear anymore. I come flying out of my tent on this. He squeed. Uh huh. Yep. It still just has ground movement, but. You come scuttling out of your tent on that. Yep. And, uh... What the hell is that? A big bug? What is that? Sort of. <laughs> and it's I, uh... Wally. Wally was an evil squid robot. Yep. So, uh, yeah, once I get out of my tent on this guy, um, how far to the one uh, Gregor is fighting? That would be 50 feet. All right. Well, with the dash, Sir Kelobot has 80 feet of movement, so I go there. And I will use an action to swing my Warhammer at it. Mm -hmm. Gonna two-hand it since I don't want to use my action to put my shield on. I believe someone has multi-attack now. Uh huh. Two hits. So it's a total of twenty eight magical bludgeoning damage. Is it still alive? Yep. I will then bonus action cast Sanctuary on myself. Love right. that spell. End of turn. Their turn. Let's see. Well, this uh, Cold Light Walker in front of you Grelnor and uh, Gregor is going to flash brightly 
for a moment. I need a... Text. What? It's probably con. Yeah. Okay, good. I brought love. What con say from you, Gregor? As it flashes you in the eyes. Just Gregor? Just Gregor. That passes. And then it's going to try to wallop you twice, Gregor. It can try. On the first hit, I'm going to the reaction to impose disadvantage. The bot's reaction. That's well, a good thing it did. Oh, that was nowhere near close to hitting me. And 13 no. doesn't hit you? You have to hit a 27. Uh-huh. Oh, he, he, he can do it one way, critting. That's one way. Suck. And then, um, two of these cold light walkers are going to focus their... You know, freezing light rays on you, Gregor. Okay. Does that mean they have to move, or...? No, no, they're firing okay. at you. Alright. Yeah. And... The final one's also gonna start hosing at you. Okay. Wrong. We'll try again. Nope. All right. Rays of light flash out at you, Gregor, but you manage to dodge all of them. And they are each going to uh, move their full 30 feet closer to you guys. Uh, specifically those of you out in melee. I need to know how they moved. 30 Did feet. they close the circle? Yeah, they're closing in on you. <laughs> Good. They're all in melee with you. Okay. Well, not all of them directly. I mean, you know what I mean. They're, they're all around you. All right. Gregor. Is it my turn again? Yes. Okay, how many of them are in melee with me? He asked conspiringly. Two of them. The other two are in melee with Grailnor. How many? How, could I move and get all, all four of them in a line? No. No, you would not be able to do so. How many could I get in the line if I was to move? Two. You could get three targets in it if uh, if you include Grelnor as a as the third target. Well, you know, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I, I am thinking. I want to do something cool, but I'm not sure what yet. Give me a second. Second rounds, mister. All right, fine. Fine, 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 fine. I am going to... If I move to... Uh, 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 how far is Girl Noah from me? Five feet. Five feet, he's, okay. He's a Jason. Um, Jason, like, okay, like he's okay, right okay. next to you. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, question. Um, if I move to him, could I have all of them in a ten foot area around me? You're you're right next to him. Could I move? 
if you stay where I you mean, are. I'm not talking about Gregor. I'm talking about the monsters. Could I move so that I got all four of them in a 10-foot area? Where you are, you'd be able to get all of them in that area. Okay. Cool. I'm going to reach down and grab Grelnor, and then I'm going to thunderstep. I need a constitution save from all four of them. Wait, 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 wait. You're grabbing me and the bot? No, just you. Fuck no, I'm not leaving my bot behind. What? <laughs> I can only carry one person. Well, it sounds like he's resisting, so you can't take him. So either the spell... Wait, okay, I, I can... Uh, okay, fine. Then I'm not going to do that at the end. Hey, well, then... Mister, you've said you're doing it. Well, if... Fine, then yeah, I'll do it. Then everybody, all... F five of them, they may have. Then all six of them make... God's aids. Care. Okay. Normally, I wouldn't be a stickler about that, mister, but given that, you know, teleporting with a person is part of actually using the spell, if he resisted, it would have to be during the spell's casting. Everybody pass, or they'll take half of this. Thirteen thunder damage as I teleport away. All right. I teleport back up to where the party is. Group, mass group of the range fighters. I'm gonna teleport up there. All right. One of the cold light walkers looks. Uh, the one that you've been wailing on looks dimmer than the others. Anything else? Um, let's see. I cast thunder bonus action. I can't cast anything else. No, I'm 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 done. All right, dragoon. I get on the uh, axe beak and order it to strafe. How many can I get in a fifteen foot cone? That depends. How much are you okay with friendly fire? Grelnor is not bloodied yet, right? That is correct. It depends on how many more beings I can get. Two without friendly fire. And... Three... With friendly fire. Not counting the ally? Correct. I'm not... Uh, yeah, I'm not including the ally in that formula. Three targets that are not allies. And two targets that are allies? Mm, I mean... Bear yeah, and... Elnor and and his, uh, his bot, yeah. But... That's the exact opposite of the ratio I want. <laughs> so, I'll take the two. And they need to make... Two saving throws. Deck saves, right? Hands combo. Yes. I think you get a level five feature. What was it? That one thing. Save, fail, save, fail. I also took the uh, feet elemental adept, even though I don't have any ones right now. But later on, right, right. Anything else? Well, the uh, bird ends the strafe back at the party. All right. Tuna. 
All right, I am no longer surprised. You're right? No longer surprised. You were thrown inside your tent. Okay, uh, then I guess I get up inside my tent using half my movement. Uh, how far away are the cold light walkers? Currently, cannot see them. Okay, I move however many feet I need to move to go outside. You step the five feet outside of your tent. You can see on the other side of your pile of axe beaks are the uh, the cold light walkers. They would be 60 feet from you. Oh, perfect. I'll move my final 10 feet towards them. And are they all advancing in a line, or...? Uh, no, they have globbed up around Grailnor. Around him? Are they, like, in a circle around him in melee, or...? Basically, they used to be surrounding two of your party members, but one of them, you know ditched, so there's an opening in that spot that they haven't circled yet. Okay. Could I hit all of them in, like, with a straight line without hitting Grailnor? If they're surrounding him, it's probably two at most. What are you attempting to do? Uh, all right. Then I would. I'm trying to cast Wall of Water, and if I can't do that, then I'll just cast it in a very tight ring around him instead of doing that. You can make it a ring up to twenty feet in diameter, but I would have to make it smaller than that to uh, to hit them with it. I'm basically trying to cast it centered on Grailmore so that it hits everyone in melee with him, but not him, because it's a circle. Okay, sorry, I just read over the spell. Alright, so you're trying to surround Grailnor with it. Yeah, I'm trying to hit all of the cold light walkers without hitting him. Alright. Can I do that? I don't think it does anything if you hit people, does it? No, it doesn't. It just makes it difficult to rain. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. Sir, I, I can I can see you being able to get them in a circle. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll cast it at whatever diameter I would need to do that, like right. seven feet or something. Yeah, it's like eight and a half feet. Yeah. Okay, then I do that, and that's my full action and movement, and uh, and that's also a spell, so I can't do anything else. So that's going to be it. All right. And now we play the waiting game. Indeed. Resnia, you are no longer surprised. You are now awake and prone inside your tent. Okay. I'm going to stand level with Tuna uh, right next to him and uh, fire a couple shortbow shots. At uh, the bad boys, the one that's uh, looking worse for wear. One second on that. That would have disadvantage from yeah. water. Yep. Give oh. me, yeah, give me those attack rolls of disadvantage. Don't worry, there's a good reason that I casted this. Do they hit? Yes. Huzzah. Okay, that's uh, 22 piercing damage. Uh, the one that looks worse for wear. And I don't think I can do anything else here. Tune is unhurt. Yeah, I th I'm done. Grelnor? 
You're inside of this wall of water that has erupted around you inside of a blizzard with four cold light walkers getting rather drenched by the wall that's uh, encompassed them. Oh, those poor bastards. All right. uh, Well, Artificer goes boink on the uh, bloodied one. Two hits. So it's uh, another 23 magical bludgeoning. Is it still alive? It is not. Okay. I turn to face the next one in line. (laughs) And my bot um, gnaws on it. All right. Which deals six force damage. Ah, fiddlesticks. I forgot my tax opportunity. Oh, well. Damn it. What a tax of opportunity. I haven't moved. You'd have, you'd have had to move like ten, five feet to get to the bloodied one. That was you when I was already done. hitting last time. Yep. Yep. I just realized I've been adding the wrong dude on the map. Yeah, no, that makes way more sense. Never mind. Okay. I, I'm just going to move column three over to column one. <laughs> there we go. Uh-huh. Please mistake that when you design a random encounter table and your stat blocks for it real fucking fast. Mm-hmm. I will then bonus action sanctuary myself again. All right. And that's it for me. Oh, that's perfect. All right. Okay, there we go. These guys. The three that are left. Well, Grelnor, I need three constitution saving throws as they flash you with light. Those of you outside of this wall of water, it looks like a really nice water and light show. Hey, so Gilbert, did you read Wall of Water? It's a ray. And the thing Uh that happens when it takes cold damage? Uh Uh-huh. Wouldn't this be going through the water? It hasn't. I said they flash him, I need con saves. Oh, this is the stun thing, right? Yes. Damn it. Ah, uh, does it require him, the the walkers, to target him? I'm asking if Sanctuary would pop. It, it would not be affected by Sanctuary. These are AoEs. Cones. Hmm. Pretty much. Alright. And then they're gonna all walk in through that wall of water. So, a seven passes? No, no, you're blind. Ah, okay. Yeah, you guys hear me yelling out, "My the guiles, they do nothing! <laughs> and then they're going to try to beat the ever-loving fuck out of you, which I believe will require a large number of wisdom saves. Yeah, every attack requires a wisdom save. Let's see, two attacks times three cre- okay, six saves. Uh-huh. I believe the first one targeted him as a disadvantage. Uh, no, not to save it. Not to save, just... No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll get to that. Um, one of those passes. All right. <laughs> and it will be making its attack at disadvantage. Well, it's flat. Well, yeah, it'd be flat. Uh, no. I was feeling a crit there. <laughs> the second there, it's like, oh, fucking Christ. This is where I crit and roll literal max damage. So, it? the reading of Sanctuary is that you, the attack gets redirected to another creature within range. So, technically, all those ones that couldn't hit me because of Sanctuary can target the robot. Indeed. Uh, one... Also, was it what? Uh, yeah, okay. Can you say? Say again? them I see. Five of them, yes. Oh, 
Holy fuck! Um, the 14 <laughs> misses. <laughs> well, that robot's oofed. I don't even think we need to roll damage or anything. It's I just want to see the dead. damage. Because <laughs> it gets shot out from under me. Oh my fucking god, what is this? And, and that was intended for... <laughs> This, this is why I use Sanctuary. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Why could I have had this luck with a fucking horrible sword? You probably weren't making as many attacks with the horrible sword. Holy shit, to imagine if it hit Grill Noor, those attacks, that'd just be <laughs> You ooh, just raised shit. me, goddammit! <laughs> holy <laughs> god. Jelly. One second, I need my calculator for this math. Yes, I think the math sums up to this. Totally that. Now all roads lead to dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. It's like he rolls all uh, ones. How many total hits is that? That is four hits, three of which are crits. So it'd be four times the static mod... And seven times the a single attacks dice. Assuming they don't have brutal critical. Right, right. This is like mean a damage. Holy duck. Triple nat 20s and the damage is 1, 2, 3. Fuck yeah! Wow! Did they just kill your damn thing? Did you? Yes. The robot, the robot had 26 hit points. Better him than you, right? Yeah. Underdark? I mean, what? he just got what are you talking about? There's no robot. <laughs> there is these crap. metal fragments just raining <laughs> down slight, like all over like a mile area. Yeah, those three Mosin shots that were supposed to hit me in the back of the head traveled through time and space to hit your robot. <laughs> they really didn't like the new design. Apparently they took issue to it. Jesus Christ, though. Three nat 20s in a row. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Grailnor. Not Grailnor. Grego. We need to pin that. We need to pin yeah. that. Someone needs to pin that. that. Shit, please. Shoot it with ice. Yeah, that's only happened one other time. That was me and the skeleton crew. To God, under I'm not actually trying. All right, to I think the dice bot is. So it's my turn now. Yeah, it's your turn. You just heard the sound of metal getting ripped asunder from inside this wall of water. Little bits of metal are just raining down all around you guys. Oh yeah. Uh. Okay. Have. How far are the monsters from me? Okay. I am going to cast Scorching Ray. Okay. No. 
<laughs> this wall of water is completely detrimental, isn't it? Ah! <laughs> with ice and he shoots wait. fire. <laughs> wait, wait, what? They got ice over them? No, it's surrounded by a wall of water. water. Oh, okay, that's right. That's the surrounded by a wall of water. Uh, how far are they apart? Are they, like, close together, or... Can't really see them all that clearly from the other side of the wall of water, but based on that huge pile of light, they're probably surrounding Grailnor and they're going to kick us. Oh, uh, un, uh, under, I should also specify you are currently prone on the ground. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could assume that they're getting ready to absolutely kick in Grailnor's shit. So, what, what, what is Wall of Water? Or do anyway. I'm not familiar with that spell. It's just um, difficult to rain, disadvantage on ranged weapon attacks, and it freezes if you deal ice damage to it. Cold <laughs> damage. Oh. Oh, it does? Which is why I cast it, and then they all proceeded to not do the attack that does ice damage. I yes. cast Ray of Frost. It At hit one of the thing, yeah. Do I need to roll damage? No, it hits the wall of water. The wall of water freezes partly. Oh, sweet. Freeze solid. I, I don't think that's going to do anything, is it? There's now a frozen wall between us and our party members oh, around. Five, five, five foot square. Yeah, I was banking on them not like doing that thing where they all immediately gang up on Grailnor and instead shooting at least one of us so that way they would freeze themselves in the water and not be able to move. That was a neat idea. Oh well. It's concentration, right? Yep, I dropped concentration on it. Yeah, wait for your turn for that. Yeah, huh? it doesn't have to be my turn for that. I can do that whenever I want to. The more you know. Yep. Concentration, it says you can drop it at any time. <clears throat> Neato burrito. All right. Well, the wall of water disappears, except for a block of ice, which just kind of lands in the snow. Neat. <laughs> All right. Dragoon. This is the closest thing I could find that was relevant. This is how, how they thought about my robot. <laughs> so, can I get uh, all three of them in a 15 foot cone? Yes, if you like friendly fire. Well, I mean, I'm on an axe speak and... Grelnor is prone on the ground. Can't I like just aim above him? Yeah, sure. Hooray! Same Three routine. saving throws. Twice. One save. So that's actually 11 damage for the second one. I swear to God, at this rate, you're going to be bringing back Grailnor in a fucking, like, doggy bag. He still has Sanctuary. I do still have Sanctuary. Uh -huh. It'll be fine until it isn't. I also have Shield. So that's total 19 damage, except for the one who saved, who gets like 14 damage. And then I run back. Alright. Although, shield is not going to save you from nat 20s. Indeed. Which seemed to be a preferred dice roll on my end. The hope is Sanctuary will prevent that from happening, but as you can see, 
as you can see. The Armor Master meta for the Saturday campaign so we don't die. The Sanctuary meta for the Monday campaign. Sanctuary shield wombo combo. Alright. Tuna? Alright, how far away is Grilmore? He is 50 feet. Okay. And how many of these cold light walkers are there left? Three. Three? All right. Uh, let's see. 50 feet. All right. Then I'll... Uh... Yeah, I'll run... I'll run 20 feet forward. And that puts him. Got to do some geometry. Oh wait, never mind. It's sixty. All right, and then I'm going to bonus action. Yeah, bonus action. Shield of Faith, Grailmore. What's All the right. bonus on that? Uh, it's plus two to your AC. Cool. And then I'll take the dodge action. Wait, actually, no, I won't. Can I change that? I, w- I would like to dash into within five feet of Grail instead of doing that. Okay. All right, I'll do that instead. Okay. So you don't cast Shield of Faith? No, I do. It's a bonus action. Oh, right, right. Sorry. All right. So you dash up to be with it uh, near him. All right. Gro- uh, Resnia. Yeah, I'm going to bonus action step of the wind to be fast as fuck, uh, be within five feet of Tuna, and then I'm going to smack the nearest cold walker twice with a quarter staff. Two hits. Okay, I will need a single constitution saving throw. The effect. Uh, stunt. It does not work. That's 18 points of bludgeoning damage. And that's all I do. All right. Grelnor. I stand up. Indeed. And to take my hammer. And which one looks the roughest? You don't know. You're still blind. Ah, okay. Hmm. Dodge? Mm. Well, I'm going to see if I have a spell that might help with that. <laughs> I don't think they count as invisible. That is that is correct. They do not count as invisible. I know. I cast invisibility on myself. Interesting. If you can't see and you can't be seen, are you really there at all? So, uh, exactly. <laughs> Schrodinger's gnome. Yes. Let's see. Bonus action. Bonus action. Uh, I will, as my bonus action, because Sanctuary does not require concentration, and he is within five feet, I will bonus action Sanctuary on Tuna. Ooh. We are now both Sanctuaried. you be able to see him? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, da, 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 da. Just says within range, thirty feet. You reward a creature within range against attack. Huh. Okay. The more you know. Yeah. Tuna does make a ton of noise when he moves in that full plate. Indeed. Seems plausible to me that you know he's there. All right. Then uh, I am done. All right. These guys turns.
Well, let's see. Uh, one of them is going to step out of melee with you in order to reposition Grailnor, uh, if you'd like to take an attack of opportunity. Opportunity has required that I be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do I get a save at the end of my turn? No, actually, you get a save at the start of your, uh, not your turn, their turn, which would ah, be okay. now. So make that save, because you might have the attack of opportunity. Yeah. Also, I did not take the hide action, so they should know where I am still. Yep. Well, uh, you can see, so you can take that attack of opportunity if you'd like. Mm, no. Okay. All right, and they're going to start flashing people. Uh, I need two saves from Resnia. Uh, sorry, two Constitution saves from Resnia. One Constitution save from Tuna. If they don't stop, they'll get arrested for public indecency. Resnia, you are blinded. Tuna, you are not blinded. Nice. All right. We will start with Resnia. Are they making ranged attacks? No, no. Uh, the two in melee are going to attempt to wallop Resnia. The one that repositioned from you is going to attempt two beam attacks, uh, two cold light rays, I should say, on Tuna. We will start with Resnia. Oh, Resnia moved up into melee? I missed that. Yeah, yeah, so I'm kind of the brunt end of... <laughs> Oops. Also, you cast two leveled spells on a turn. Oh, shit, I did. Indeed. I guess I'm not shit. invisible. If you want to stay invisible since you did that first, no. then I'll, I'm okay no, with... No, I don't. I would, I would, if I got to choose, I would choose to do Sanctuary over Invisibility. Yeah, okay, that was, uh, that was a bit of a blunder on my part for not catching Yeah, then in that case, I would have dodged action. Okay. Yeah, I stand. I stand by the ass whooping I'm about to deal out. All right. Um, four attacks in your direction, Resnia. Mm -hmm. Everything except the seventeen hits. All right. Uh, please keep cold damage separate. I'm resistant to that. Tuna should totally, like, help me a little here. Okay. And there's the cold. Yeah. So, that's something like, uh, what, 47 points of damage, roughly? Let's see, I uh, have 45, because I'm resistant to cold. Yeah, I'm, I'm eyeballing the math there. It's like, what, 46, 47? 47, yeah. Alrighty. Yep. And these other two are going to attempt to... Uh, this guy's going to attempt to uh, cold light ray tuna. Wisdom save. Did they actually hit Resnew? Yeah, you didn't see the 70 points of damage headed my way? Oh shit, no. Can I have intercepted that? Or is it too late? A little late. Alright then. Failures, uh, you have to redirect the attacks. Hit. Indeed, they have to redirect... Okay. Well, the blind person or the dodging? Okay. If, if they're targeting me, they also have to make wisdom saves. I can tell you they're not. Okay. But if they have to make a wisdom save against him, can they redirect back onto me and just keep going back and forth forever? <laughs> Under the all right, all right. parts of the spells, yes, but that's kind of a hack. All right, guys, so you see this cold light walker turn between the two of you trying to take aim that fires down the middle at Resnia. <laughs> it decided Excellent. to split the difference. One hit. Alright, I'm going to intercept this instead. 
This is all cold damage. Okay. Okay, so right, that's so nine half. Yeah. How I'm you glad looking? I have that amulet of health. Yeah, I'm badly bloody. Oof. That should be uh, no damage, then. I think your... Uh, what is it? Uh, damage negation goes first, then my resistance? Correct. Uh, oh, okay. I take off what you do, then we apply stuff. That way, for the most part, there will always be damage. After all, it, it's not they get hit and then you block it, it's you block it and then it hits. All right, so that's their turn. Uh, Gregor. All right, how many of these things are left in three. the positioning? There are three left. They're all ganged up around your party members up in the melee. Is the wall of water still there? Nope, that's gone. All right, well, I'm on a scorching ray. The three of them. I think that's how it works. I have three bolts. Yep. Bolts, right? Let me see. Make sure. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Scorching ray. Scorching ray. Whoops. Scorching ray. Yeah. Three. Okay. Yeah, sure. Two hits, right? Two hits. Well, I'll be damned. One gets hit for two points, and one gets hit for ten. Fire damage. All right. Uh, two of them are now faded. All right, so there's only one left? No, I said faded, not dead. What does that mean? Almost dead? Well, you know, they're, they're not actually bleeding, so the light's kind of fading a bit. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Well, how far are they from me? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I have 80 feet of movement, so I'm going to go up and I'm going to slash one of the faded ones. With my haste action. All right. Well, motherfucker, I miss. Some of my bitch. Indeed, you miss. <laughs> Thankfully, you weren't blind. All right, I am done. All right. Dragoon. Quick question. How large are these things? Medium. Oh, okay. Well, how many can I get within a 15-foot cone? That depends. How do you feel about friendly fire? No, thanks. You will find that it is impossible, then. Mm, actually, wait. Okay, there's there's one that you'd be able to get without getting friendly fire. You'd have to circle around all the way to the other side of the group. I will do that. My axe speak run fast. All right. He needs to make one deck saving throw. He failed and take 12 damage. I will then fire Bolte, the most damaged one. All right. Hit. Six. 
16 fire damage. All right. I'll stay on this side, but back up a bit. All right. That's it. Tuna? All right, so you said there's still three of these and one of them is faded now? Correct. All right, uh, I'm going to pick the faded right. one. There's two faded, three left. Oh, there's two faded ones. All right, then I'll pick one of the faded ones. And I'm going to start smacking him. Which is going to cause me to lose Sanctuary. Does the 23 hit? Hits. All right, that's fourteen bludgeoning damage. All right. Let's see what else have I got here. Uh, well, I'm already concentrating on that. All right, uh, that's going to be it, though. All right. Resnia, you are currently blind. Okay. I'm going to action disengage and bonus action dash away, because I hurt a lot. Indeed. So I'm going to get as far away as my feet will take me, which will be uh, 80 feet. And uh, I'll try to reposition myself to be, like, vaguely looking where the hostiles are, and then I'm going to go prone. That's all I can really do. All right. Wait, which direction did you say you wanted to run? Away. Away from the bad guys. Just away from the sound of combat. Sure. Give me a, we'll just call it a perception check at disadvantage. Could I use survival with uh, the recollection of where we camped instead? No. No, this would, this would just be based on your senses. Survival would require, you know, other skills that you cannot apply currently. Oh, this would be memory, I'm arguing. That's why I was saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, it wouldn't count. Sure. All right, yeah, you run off in a direction. The rest of you guys see uh, Resnia kind of charge to the northeast instead of the east. The buffoon has lost his mind. I've lost my senses, but not my mind. <laughs> I'm done. That's all I can do. Indeed. Grailnor. Yeah, so uh, one of these guys is faded, right, by me? Two of them are fading. All right. Uh, am I melee with the two faded ones? You are. Then I shall hit one with my hammer, twice. You said you just hit one of them, right? Yeah. Focusing fire. 26 magical bludgeoning. I will then... Bonus... You kill... Go ahead. You kill one of them. Your hammer strikes it in the, uh, the hood, and the light goes out. All right. 
and then I will bonus action Sanctuary on myself. All right. Done. All right. The one not in melee is going to shift his position about 20 feet. And he is going to flash Dragoon. Dragoon, constitution saving throw. All right. All right, that passes. You're not watching. As it shoots two cold light rays at you, Dragoon. Uh, one hit. Thirty points of cold damage. I resist. You're also resistant? I got the boots. Oh, you yeah, the yeah, boots. yeah, yeah, the snuggly warm boots. All right. And the other one. Uh... Oh, uh, Resna, you're also no longer blind. Um, this guy is going to flash Gregor. Gregor, constitution saving throw. That fails. You are now blind, Gregor. All right, and he's going to attempt to slam you into the uh, the snow with his fists. Remember your uh, your shield of faith. I have shield of faith on me too. No, that's Grailor. Wait, is, oh. is it attacking Grailor or Gregor? Gregor? Oh, okay, I misheard. Gregor. Uh, yeah, what? You couldn't hit me if you tried, but, I mean, yeah, you can keep swinging. They miss? Yeah. All right. Jesus, you have a lot of AC. 27, bruh. 27. How the hell do you have 27 armor class? That's stupid. <laughs> my armor class is 20 with blade song. And my haste gives me a plus two. Shield gives me a plus five. That's 27. Right. When did you use shield? Just then, when you hit me for 23. Ah, I don't think you were holding that. You're pushed to talk. At least I didn't hear you. All right. I apologize. Yes, I would shield a 23, and yes, you couldn't hit me if you... Ah, uh, okay. I was kind of like, how the fuck do you have natural 27 armor class? Right now. He, it's he is a Warforged pre-patch. And suddenly his character disintegrates. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alright. Come to think of it, none of you ever remember knowing someone named Grilnor or Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. In fact, speaking of Gregor, Gregor, it's your turn. Alright, since there's one hitting me, I'm gonna hit him back. All right. You are still blind. So that disadvantage? Yes.
one hit. Six points of piercing damage. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's no, I'm done. All right, Dragoon. Uh, how many can I go with the 15 foot cone? No allies? One. Well, then he better give me one deck safe. He takes half. So that's an 8, so 1 to 2, and so 4 damage. And then I'll just cast a Firebolt at the most damaged one. Alright. You bust a cap in the ass of the same dude. Or, sorry, the other dude. All right. That's it. All righty, Tuna. All right, there's still these three guys left. Two guys. One of them was killed by Grelnor. Ah. And one of them is also faded. Yes. All right, I'm going to hit him twice. Actually, you know what? I, I might kill him, so I'm just going to hit him once for now. Hey, there we go. Hey! And you know what, just to, just to make sure this kills him, I'm going to put a, a uh, first level smite on it. These guys are undead, right? Yes. Okay. And a net, does a net 20 also double smite dice, or is it only yes. the weapon? Oh, okay. So this let's see, why, that's 60. This is why smiting is really, really fun. Yeah, so it's 2d8 from a first level plus an additional d8 from undead, doubled to 6. Is my math right here? Yep. Plus your weapon. Sounds right to me. Alright, that's a mix of 54 bludgeoning and radiant. Out of curiosity, do you have a preference for the color of your smite light? Ooh, that's a good question. It would probably be bright blue, because he's got sort of like a water theme going on. Alright, yeah. So you smash into this uh, this cold light walker, and you smite it, and that light that it's emanating goes from being a like a really cold, pale blue to a, a brighter, deeper blue. It's not a huge shift, but it's a honestly it kind of sears your eyes about just as much. Mm -hmm. And then it goes out, collapsing into the snow. Cool. Let me just look at my character sheet real quick. Uh, you kind of get that like a uh, water rippling uh, shadow effect from light you know oh. that it appears on the ground around it and then it dissipates hmm. well it doesn't say that I can't smite more than once in the same turn y yeah all right. It's per Taladin. You, yeah, any time that your weapon makes contact with your opponent's uh, heretical ass, you can smite them. All right, well, I'm going to make another attack against the other undead. All right. 
Oh, that probably doesn't hit. That, that, that doesn't hit. Oh well. And let's see, do I want to use my bonus action to do anything? Hmm. Bonus, bonus, bonus. No. I'm done. Actually, is there any... There's not anybody in melee with this last Cold Light Walker who isn't in melee with me. It's just me and Grelnor up here. No, you're in melee with the one that you just attempted to wallop. Yeah, I mean, like, any allies besides him. Oh, no, just just you and him. Okay. Gre uh, Gregor. Wait, is it Gregor or Grelnor who's up here? Gregor. Oh, okay, oh, I wasn't aware of that. I thought Gregor was attacking from range. No, he, 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 he was. He started, Gregor was attacking from forward. range, then he moved into melee. This one moved into, you know, wallop his bitch ass. You moved in and just attempted to fight him. Right. Grelnor was in melee with a one that you were previously in melee with. Well, two of them, technically. Except he killed one of them and you killed the other. And then When he hasn't on. moved, okay. Right, he hasn't had a chance to move since he killed one. I see now. So I'm in melee with Gregor and Grelnor. No, just Gregor. Okay, then. I got it. Turn over. I feel like I'm... I, I, I literally have, like, who's near who, and I feel like I'm more confused. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, it's all right. easy to communicate. Resnia? Well, I'm an action healer's kit and bonus action hands healing myself. That's all I do. All right. Grenor. How far to the last one? 15 feet. 1 5? Sorry, I was yawning. Yeah, uh, 15, 1 5. Alright. I run up to him and smack him with my hammer. Twice. For nine magical bludgeoning. And how rough is he looking? Calculating. Uh, he is faded, but he's still pretty well. Then I will end my turn here. All right. All right, Gregor, you are no longer blinded. Gregor, constitution saving throw. He's flashing you again. Okay. He better do something. Cause, uh, it's not looking well for him. Indeed, you pass. You're not blind. My turn? What? Oh, I thought it was my turn. No, I just said you're not blind. Oh, okay. He knocks your lights out because he's going to attempt to slam you twice. I believe someone's not <laughs> lights. Even, are not with, even with a twenty, he still couldn't hit me unless he rolls a twenty. That is the only way he can hit me. Look, man, and it still doesn't beat the armor class. A common theme. Yep. He only hit me once, though, so I'm going to shield that second one. So, how much HP do you have? Forty something. And he also has me in melee with him. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm just curious to see if he's potentially able to knock your lights out before you can reaction shield. I'm just going to roll that preemptively. Damn, that is over my full max hit points. That would knock me out.
Totally. <laughs> did Tuna uh, oh not take Tuna out? Didn't yeah. Tuna direct eight? Well, then it only hits me for 40. Three? Two. Two. Two, 42. I'm still alive. I have 47 hit points. I have five more, and I shield the second hit, so he ain't hitting me again. If, if not, if not for Tuna, man, goddamn, I would have been proud of calling that shot. Just knocks your lights out. First punch. Yeah, this is this is the ref interfering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to try hard to hit me to that wham right into the fucking snow. You. His paladin holy symbol is just a whistle. <laughs> it's a <laughs> whistle. All right. And it's Tuna with the steel chair. Gregor, it is your turn. He just smashed half your face in. Your nose is broken. I'm going to hit him. And you've Once. got a black guy. Gregor R D twenty plus seven. I don't. I don't know. Is that a hit? That connects. Thank good. How's that? Is he still up? Yeah, he's still up. All right, well, then I'm going to miss you. Step away. Bye. I'm going to miss you. Step 30 feet away. All right. And uh, I'm going to end my turn. All right. Dragoon. So, uh, I'll flamethrower. There's only one left now? Yep. And I can hit him with the flamethrower without hitting allies? Yep. He make dex. Fifteen damage. And then a firebolt. Ten more damage. All right. And as you blast it with a, uh, you know, bolt of flames, its clothes catch fire and its light goes out, collapsing into the snow. The blizzard blowing out what's left of the burning cinders. Hooray! Congratulations, guys. You were out of initiative. It's still really cold outside. All right, let's go back to bed. Yeah, I'm tired. Oh, we can all go to bed inside the wagon. Yes, my watch is over. Someone else's watch. Yeah, your watch is over. Your eye is blackened. Your nose broken. Your lips swollen. Oh, Gregor, you look horrible. Hang on. Yes, he... <laughs> he hit me. Yeah, that's what I can do. You take that much in healing. What the fuck are with my nat 20 in this game? <laughs> Anyone else? I'm just a little cold. I'm fine. Alright.
Well, as soon as uh, Gregor's watch well, ends, I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then All I can right. get my rest and wake up full. Yeah. The rest of uh, the night passes without any kind of, you know, more divine airstrikes coming in. And so begins the third day. Underdark, would you care to wield the uh, Executioner's Axe again? Sure. What, that's a D8? That's a D8. All right, uh, D20. Ooh. All right. Give me a second. I have to do a little reading here. Let's go to the zoo. Let's start with a D4 under. If you could roll me a D4. All right, yeah. So, you guys continue your uh, trek on the third day, and you can see up ahead of you a group of four rather tall-looking uh, humanoid figures in cold weather gear, striding through the snow, single file, about ten feet apart. Each one of these figures looks to be maybe seven. Eight feet tall. Do they look like Goliaths? Are they bald? Or are they, they are blue eyes yetis? They have, they have hoods up. And hats. Ah. Well, they're probably Goliaths. How far away are they? They look to be about 200 feet. Are they heading in a way that we're going to intercept them? Eh, you guys are headed north or kind of headed uh, southwest. or I'm sorry, no, southeast. Can my owl do a little flyby to pick up more details? Uh, yeah, sure. Your owl begins to fly by. I think I'll just wave. Just acknowledge our presence as we're moving north. Alright, yeah. You see the one in the lead kind of raise his hand in acknowledgement as they keep walking. You guys do anything other than that? And uh, your owl as it flies by, yeah, looks like these might be Goliaths. You know, um, can I tell if anyone looks like they're hurt from this distance? Like if they're limping? You can see pretty clearly none of them are limping. All right. Well, if you guys don't want to talk to them, I guess we just keep on moving. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Just acknowledge yeah. and move, just, just wave and move on. Yeah. And thus, you move on. The day coming to an end with another rest. Oh boy, who wants to kill the party today, Under? Would you like the honors? Sure. Roll D for me a D8. Aw, oh, man. Well, on the fourth and final day of your trek, 
You all march north through the snow, and you can begin to smell a bit of uh, salt water on the wind. As you, as you uh, kind of crest a s dune of snow, you see this ahead of you. Sick. A great stone fortress kind of jutting out of the snow and from the side of a cliff face. Welcome to your destination. Well, I think we would go in and uh, approach the gate. Is it guarded? Give me a second. Oh, shit. I just closed the wrong tab. Please hold while the dungeon master get his, gets his shift back. Also, give me like 10 minutes to read over this. I can already hear the music. What music? Skyrim uh, music. It's the gif of the Skyrim loading screen. <sighs> I didn't even have to look at it. I can already hear it. Alrighty. When the loading screen suddenly and unexpectedly finishes. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Alrighty. So, you guys see this... Um, uh, did you do? Here, here it is, here it is. So you can see perched on a high cliff overlooking the sea of moving ice, a bleak stone fortress carved out of a gigantic blade-shaped rock. A central tower looms over the rest of the fortress, and light leaks from its arrow slits. Four smaller towers rise from the outermost corners of the fortress, and you can see guards uh, stationed atop of them. Uh, 
Is there a gate? You do see a front door, yes. Are there guards? There are guards up on the battlements, yes. All right, then I... I stand corrected. There are no guards directly overhead, just at the battlement tower is my mistake. Oh, so there's no guards. Yeah, just the big old uh, steel front door. Should we, like, yell, hey, announce our presence? That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. All right. How close are you getting? Close enough to, like, what I can tell there aren't any guards that I can see and that start yelling that we're trying to get in. Oh, okay, so you're probably about 80 feet from the entrance. Oh, I guess. This place looks pretty big. <laughs> Indeed. Then again, we are by the sea, so it might be loud here. The wind is pretty loud. Oh yeah, that too. Is there a fence or a wall? Nope. It, this this is designed a lot like um like a seventeen hundred star fort. There there's no really walls outside of it. Yeah, well it's got that cool like star shaped citadel layout. Mm -hmm. The best kind of citadel. I'll give Tuna a couple minutes with the shouting and trying to get a attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm still if, shouting if nobody's coming out. Yeah, and if not, I'll I'll start shouting and then I'll fly up in the air and uh, announce myself. Try to get someone's attention. All right, yeah, you you fly up, and as you kind of look over the side of the battlement, you can see about uh, 14 guards aiming crossbows at you. Yeah, I, I put my hands in surrender and I say that we're trying to get in. Uh, yeah. They open fire. Do you land? Well, uh, yes, but do they respond? Like, uh, I'm trying to, like... They don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, I lower myself. Yeah, I land. Now, it's all the party, what's up, um... Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but they seem really uh, on edge. They even have the courtesy to answer me. Well, I'll, I'll just be standing there. I won't even have my weapon out. I'll just be holding the letter. I'll be like, Hello, we come seeking entry. We have a letter from the Speaker Aris of Tourmaline. There is no response. Uh... Can I send my owl to get a closer look? Oh, actually, uh, I'll start knocking on the door. Yeah, we haven't tried that. Maybe we need to do that. All right, you go to knock on the barging. door and you send your owl to start flying. I'll wait for him to knock before going over past the walls. Hmm. You do see a crossbow bolt fly uh, out kind of in the direction of your owl. All right, so that uh, means they're not frozen statues. No, they're definitely not. All right, so you got to knock on the door? Yeah. Just keep on repeating, hey, uh, like we seek passage. We got a letter. All right, so you knock on the door. About two minutes go by. And then you hear the sound of metal on metal. Almost like a like a large deadbolt is being moved. A little thunk, and the door opens inward. Okay. One second here. Yeah, you see a looks to be one of the guards dressed in cold weather gear. All right, state your business. What are you doing here? I walk up to the front and I repeat that thing I just said about how we have a, a note to deliver from the Speaker Aris of Turbulent. 
kind of holds out his hand for the letter. I handed the letter. Kind of pulls out a knife, breaks the seal, pops it open, unfolds it, gives it a read. All right, I'll take you to see the warden. Uh, that being said, you, with the wings, he's looking right at you, Resnia. Yeah. This is a secure facility. The next time you try something like that, we will open fire. Yeah, you just weren't answering to our um, our summons. I was concerned that something was wrong. That's all. I meant no uh, harm or disrespect, of course. Hey, Cairo. Mm-hmm. Follow Hello. me. We can leave the x beaks in the wagon in the yard, yes? Well, actually, do they have a place here? Yep. We'll uh, we'll we'll store them in the stables for now. No Perfect. animals are allowed inside the facility. That being said, do any of you possess familiars? I raise my hand. You are to keep your familiar in the presence of the animals at all times. If that creature disappears for any reason, we will put the facility on lockdown. Alright, alright. Do It'll any of the my... rest of you have familiars? No, no familiar. Just my seat. Your steed will also have to stay in the stables. Well, it's not going to shit anywhere, if that's what you're worried about. It's not shit we're worried about. Your steed will stay in the sa- stables. All right. While I am putting it in the stables, I do verbally tell it. All right. Now, Sir Killabot Mark II, don't eat the guards this time. And then I just walk away. Okay, well, I'm ready to go. All right. So we kind of lead you guys in to the uh, kind of main chamber of the entranceway. All right, now we just need you to turn over all of your weapons. This is a secure facility, after all. This includes spellcasting, foci, and any other device that could be used to cast magic or inflict violence. Very well. I hand him my uh, my anchor mall thing, and also my holy symbol. All right, yeah, he kind of keeps pat. He kind of passes it over to the uh, quartermaster. And if it's all the same, window. I'll just secure my shit to uh, you know my robot back in the stables. Unfortunately, no. Secure all of your equipment here with the quartermaster. I pass him my uh, staff, but the uh, flamethrower is conspic is absent. I'll hand him my quarterstaff, short bow, and a dagger. And uh, without pointing at anyone, I'll unload this laser pistol and then hand him the, the laser pistol. The fuck is this? It's best that uh, you don't mess with it. Mess with it as little as possible. It's quite... Um, it's a magic gun. Unstable. Yeah. Oh, God. Look, look. Only one of them has exploded before. Yeah, it's best to mess with it as little as possible, if at all. Oh, actually, here, while I'm at it, um, I'll give you the quiver of arrows I got. Yeah. All right, guys, I, let, let, let's dream like this. Is anybody attempting to keep any physical weapons or spellcasting focuses? No, I hand over my my sword. Do they care that I'm carrying tools? Yes. Those would also be on that. My apologies, I should add those in there too. Basically, guys, uh, most of your equipment they're going to want to have stashed in here. I'd like to clarify, what do they not want? 
Like, what's okay That's to keep? Going to include my grappling hook, climber's kit, and all of my rope. Absolutely. Let me put it this way, uh, just because I don't have your inventories in front of me. Um, if you if you guys could think you could find some way to arm a prisoner or escape a prison with it, it's not allowed. All right, I turn over my soap. I'll turn in the scalpels I have in my healer's kits. Yeah, I mean... Or they're they're taking really concerned about that. We're gonna fill up their fucking armory at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can... Okay, actually, no, let's just count the money. Okay, dude. Come look through. All right, now the money's clean. Here you go. Do they care about scrolls? Yes. Yes, we do. You, you hear you hear one of the guards inside the armor go, By Lathander, what the hell do we have here? Yeah, so I'm like, some... pulling out, like, scroll, scroll, smith tools, scroll, tinker's tools, scroll, navigator's tools, caltrops, thieves' tools. Ball bearings, ten oil flasks. We came all the way here from Brinshander on Axepeak. You gotta be prepared. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about this uh, animal light hammer. But yeah, no, I don't try to keep any holdouts. Alright, is anybody trying to keep any holdouts? Nope. Uh, give them the 20 pythons. Alright. Yep. Another well, guard kind of frisks all of you, but since no one's hiding anything, he finds nothing of note. All right, if you'll follow me, please, we'll be heading to uh, the meeting room. There you're, you will wait until the warden can come see you, at which point they will handle the entire process of whether or not you will be allowed to speak to the prisoner in question. Okie doke. Works for me. All right, yeah. So he escorts you guys down a couple of angled hallways, kind of leading around part of the perimeter of this uh, citadel. Opens the door and lets you all in. Inside of this meeting room is a large rectangular table with a single chair on one side and three smaller chairs on the opposite end of it. The uh, the door itself is a... Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is a hatch. There's also a wooden ladder leading to an iron hatch in the ceiling. Uh, kind of stationed in the south wall of this room. All right, wait here, please. And once you all funnel in, he closes the door, and you hear the sound of it locking. Were we just captured without meaning to? No, I'm fine. pretty sure this is okay. I just hope they don't blow themselves up touching that laser pistol. And hopefully they don't blow up our stuff. Yeah, that's the thing I'm really worried about. To be, to be clear, uh, Gilbert, they didn't care that I, I was still wearing my armor, right? The breastplate? Oh, no, no, they they do. They do care that I was wearing a breastplate. Yes. Or, sorry, half plate. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
well, like clothes, boots, things like that are fine. Yeah. Basically, they're they're doing everything to stack things against everyone that's uh, in the building that's not part of the guard force. <laughs> they fucked up. Why? Because they let you in through the front door? Well, no, it's just, um... Uh, if it comes up. <laughs> oh, dear lord. As an action, I summon this thing, which allows me to do all the things I can normally do. Well, um, it looks like that the wait is going to be real time. Uh, so, you know, feel free to talk amongst yourselves inside this conference room while the uh, warden makes their way over here. And by that, I mean I continue to read. Hey, look, there's Lizard. Cobalt sneaks her way in. I'm going to be right back. All good. Man, it feels cold. I don't have my flamethrower with me. The room itself is quite... Uh, I wouldn't quite say it's quite nice, but it, it's warm. I don't have my flamethrower, therefore I am cold. <laughs> My mind is absolutely boggled by this. The actual important information on the on the warden is like jammed in with a location and like there's like four paragraphs that are almost entirely moot and useless. Yeah. Holy crap, they gave this person a huge fucking backstory. I'm looking at this like, right, because the players are definitely going to ask, and this information's definitely going to be volunteered, sure. All right, one moment.
I have returned. So we're still waiting. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, this section is not very conveniently laid out. How long have we been waiting so far? Ten minutes. It's, oh. It's, it's been real time, he said. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This it's is a big prison. real time. Yeah, well, this is the in real time part of getting all of our shit searched and, like, going through security. Yeah, yeah. Guard rolls not one, accidentally blows himself up with a laser pistol. Somehow. We're blamed and then subsequently imprisoned. After me explicitly telling them, touch that as little as possible, it's dangerous. Sounds legit. It does actually. <laughs> They go to the stable and find out that Sir Kilobot, well, it's not there anymore. It went out to spread uh, tentacles to everything it could see. Well, there's always air vents in prisons, right? We're, we're like in an yes. Aliens 3 situation here. Oh, there, God. There are air vents in the prison made out of stone. Mm-hmm. Ducks, actually. Alrighty. So you guys spend about, oh, what is it, uh, 12, 15 minutes now of waiting. And the door opens. You see a woman wearing red robes with golden trim. Enter the room. She introduces herself. Hello. I'm Warden Marta Marthanis. I understand that you have a letter from Tourmaline's speaker. We do. As I understand, you need to speak with prisoner 237 today. Inquiries about an arcane brotherhood? Uh, that's Valish Gant, then yes. Yes, that would be Valish Gant. Yes, we believe he may have a lead relating to activities by the arcane brotherhood surrounding ten towns, which could potentially pose a significant threat to people living in the area. Indeed. I shall authorize this interview. That being said, I must be present at all times during it. Of course. Excellent. We shall take you to see him now, then. Very good. begin leading you down to a, uh, a different room, kind of following the same perimeter set of corridors. All right. And they take you into a uh, sparsely appointed room. But it's only about 20 feet by 20 feet, so although you know, it's a little crowded. And you can see sitting at the opposite side of a table a human male who looks, you know, a lot like that. All right, this is Prisoner 237. You may now begin your uh, questioning, if you would like. I'm just going to post this for everybody's reference. Yep. Who's taking lead in questioning? The one uh, with good charisma, I think. I think I will. 
Right. Mr. Gant, could you tell us why you're imprisoned here in Revel's End? Warm prison here. Are you stupid, fish man? Try just th five years ago, I tried to take over the whole damn ten towns. Yes, that's what we're here to ask you about. Can you go into a little more detail? Just so that we're all on the same basis here. Why should I? Mr. Gant, I'm trying to get to know you here. Trying to do this like friends. Mm -hmm. See, there's one problem there. You're not my friend. Not unless you want to try to break me out of this joint. I wouldn't dream of it. Alright, well then why don't we skip to the juicy parts. Mr. Gant, we believe that the Arcane Brotherhood, <clears throat> which you were at one point associated with, is planning something that could potentially threaten Ten Towns. We want to know what you know about this. What, the expedition? Uh, back when I came up here, that was... hypothetical. Why don't you tell us a little more about this expedition? What's that to say? The Brotherhood wanted to find a... Mithilar. Old Netherese magic. Thought it was located under the glacier. At the time it was all hypothetical, but based on the sound of it, I assume my organization sent members? Uh, we'll get to that. But first, we want to know what the Arcane Brotherhood knew about this Mithalar and its location. Well, for starters, I assume you know who the Netheril were, right? Why don't we start there? Tell us everything you know. Kind of sighs. <sighs> Netheril was a civilization ruled by powerful wizards. It fell several thousand years ago. Powerful magic, flying cities. Magic so powerful the gods feared it. I can understand why the Arcane Brotherhood would be interested in that. Of course. Who doesn't want to attempt to recreate that magic? Especially the work of Carsus. And who is this Carsus? He kind of face palms a bit. Good lord, people read nothing nowadays. Carsus, Netheries Archmage, tempted a powerful spell to usurp M Mistril, god of magic, tore the weave in half. Does nobody read? There aren't a lot of books up here in Icewind Dale. I can tell. I've encountered troglodytes that were better read than you. Now, about these netheril and their flying cities and their technology, did the Arcane Brotherhood have any information about locations of these? As I said, when I last encountered my compatriots down in uh, Luskin, this expedition was all theoretical. Yes, but even at that stage, they would have had to know where to look. Otherwise, there would be no point. And as I said, as far as I know, we believe it could be under the glacier. Given that the rest of this blasted landscape is nothing but snow and ice. Can I make an insight check? Give me an insight check. Well, he's condescending and he feels like he's talking to a group of children. Mm. 
Okay. Is there a specific thing you're trying to read for? Um, does he know more than he's saying? You're genuinely uncertain. Okay. Uh, hey, mister. Okay. I did that on accident. Uh Uh-huh. Now, is that all, fish man? Do you have other questions for me? Um, What do you know about Avarice? (laughs) The tiefling albino. Promising future, that one. Do you know of her plans? Where she planned on going? As I've said before, the expedition here was entirely theoretical when I last left. Although if Avarice is sent here, it certainly means she's doing well. Or they sent here to die. (laughs) Or that, yeah. I'm curious, how how is it that someone of your stature managed to get captured and put here? Adventurers. Need I say more? Nope. This theoretical expedition, did you guys have potential sites for this uh, Netherese uh, city? You know, I'd love to be able to share more with you, but this this building is just so damp. I'm afraid it clouds the memory. Can I make an insight check? Does he even have any useful information to bargain with? Give me an insight check. To the question of if they had any hypothetical locations, he does sound like he's holding out. Valish, we're not stupid. We know the Arcane Brotherhood wasn't just going to go marching off into the Raghead Glacier with no sight in mind. If there's something you're not telling us, you need to. I'm afraid I don't need to do anything. Warden? That being said... As I keep telling you, and I don't know when you're going to get this through your skull, but the entire expedition was theoretical when I left. Well, we have reason to believe this theoretical expedition is no longer so theoretical. Well, clearly, if Avarice is here. Indeed. And I don't know if you recognize me or heard of me. But I have some poll with some nobles down south, members of the Alliance. Warden, as you have no doubt surmised, this is a matter of grave importance. If you could comply the prisoner to be more cooperative, we would appreciate. I don't think there's any need for anything of base here. As for you, Gnome, I do believe I recognize you. Prisoner 237, that's not 237, that's this one. Prisoner 484 definitely did not like you. Yes, well, perhaps uh, you shouldn't be worshipping demons and devils within the confines of Waterdeep. Indeed, he was being quite stupid. 
Yeah, speaking of stupidities, I, I do wonder how long you'll last in here when I start telling the start telling everyone in Ten Towns and beyond to the south about uh, this wonderful source of information on the Arcane Brotherhood that we got here and how compliant and useful he's been in giving us information. Give me an intimidation check. As I say in a very small oh, no. voice. <laughs> I don't think you have as much pull as you think you do, Gnome. Hmm, that's funny. I was about to say the same thing to you, given as you're currently in prison. You're not exactly in a position to negotiate. Nor are you, it seems. You know, Tuno, we could always, with the warren's permission, of course, arrange an expedi uh, a call out to those friends we made with the uh, Nautiloid. I'm sure they have means of extracting information from brains. That is true. We have recently made some friends with a group of Nautiloids who could be persuaded to be of assistance in this matter. <laughs> okay. Would you rather deal with us or them, Mr. Gant? Would I rather deal with a ship or with the... Do you even understand what a Nautiloid is? Oh, yes. It's... Yes, and we met the tentacled fellows on board question is, do you know who they are? And do you really want to deal with them? You can ask Resnia. They're quite good at picking over people's brains, so to All speak. Right. So, are you guys attempting... What are, you, what are you attempting to do? Deceit, intimidation, or persuasion? No, I'm trying to persuade him. I mean, I'm considering that That's either it, yes. you either you Tuna or Grailnor is going to roll for this, but Tuna should be, that's why I was I, I would him. like to roll for this. Alright, you're doing the roll for this, and then are you attempting to persuade, intimidate, or deceive? I am attempting to persuade. Alright. Make the roll with advantage. Because um, Grailnor is assisting you. Okay, I haven't used this in a while, slash ever, but I do have a thing that I got from AGR's character that lets me add a d4 if I fail. Should I just add that now? What? Yeah, it's weird. So, Oh, his level 3 feature, that's yeah, right. I, uh, I haven't used it in a million fucking years, but I do technically have it. <laughs> I forgot about that. What? Yeah, yeah I remember, like, a pack to the, what is it, Talisman? Yeah, it is a attuned magic item that lets me add a d4 when I fail an ability check. Now, on this, I don't know if I would fail or not. So should I just add it preemptively? Only when you would fail, so no. Make the check and then do it. All right. Indeed. Even if you did know these illithid that you speak of, I highly doubt the warden would let them anywhere near this building. What is going to happen to this prisoner? Is he here to... Is he going to be executed? I think he's just going to rot, right? So... Let me tr try to talk to him. But I'm going to need... Ah, fuck. Wait, so was this a failure or a success? It would be a failure. Make your d4. That would still not pass. Damn it. I, I, will, I will spoil this. The reason I didn't bother mentioning it a second time was even with a 4, it wouldn't have helped. Ah, uh, okay. Circumstances being as they are. All right. Uh, what were you saying, Gregor? See, I have an idea, but I don't know how I how 
how, how much the party is going to like it when I suggest it. But Gregor can make him talk. I mean, yeah. How? I'm curious for DM. A little bit of torture, maybe? Or the threat of torture? Well, not torture, actually. Death, rather. But it would only work if he's going to die anyway. I mean, if they were going to execute him. Because, yeah. I'm going to turn to the warden. I'll say, warden, if there's any assistance you could give us here, anything you could offer the prisoner, that would be greatly appreciated. This is very important. As important as it might be, I am not legally allowed to assist in this regard. Are you, you give us legally room, allowed Mr. to Warden? condone? No, I am not allowed to condone, and no, you may not have the room. I must be in attendance uh, for all conversations with the prisoner. I understand. That being said, it also sounds like he is uh, not willing to cooperate. Not through normal means, of course. Which are the only means we allow here. <sighs> Valus, I don't want to have them torture you. The warden speaks up. Y you misunderstand. I mean, we do not engage in that here at this facility. Does he have the death sentence? No, he does not. He's currently carrying a life sentence. How much would it... How, would, how hard would it be to change that life sentence to a death sentence? Incredibly. As doing so would, would require the... Uh, well... It would require you to get the approval of the counselors here from the various members of the Lord's Alliance. That being said, that is a deliberately manipulative use of the law that I will not stand for. All right, Valus, we know your days as a free man are over, but there must be something on the outside that you care about. You never no, had any family? No, not really, no. So that's it then? You're just gonna... Well, without the, without the, the use of torture, then there's pretty much no way we can crack this guy. I mean, perhaps we could send a letter, uh, supervised, of course, and we could deliver it by hand. He already said he doesn't have family he cares about. No, but maybe, uh, friends. No, but there might be people who care about him. Yeah. People like the Arcane Brotherhood. I give a note to Tuna. Including Avarice. We're hot on her tail as well. She's going to end up here eventually. There's no doubt in that. How about this? When we find the Arcane Brotherhood and when we find Avarice, we can either tell them that you helped us, or we won't. And if you do help us, then we won't say anything. I'm afraid I have nothing more to say to you, Fishman. Warden, if we're done here. <sighs> I'll be back. The warden kind of speak now. Well, it would seem as if you're not going to be able to get any useful information out of him. 
And with that, I'm going to have to call this uh, interview here. She kind of directs you all to leave the room. So be it. Yep. Well, as uncooperative as he was, thank you for giving us your time. Of course. If you have any other information on him that he himself wasn't willing to divulge, we'd love to hear it. Unfortunately, no. We, uh, until you brought it up, we haven't had any reason to ask him about any of these topics. I'm sure, but you would have been now. Uh, you would have presumably been in contact with the team that apprehended him, no? I would hardly use the word team to describe them. They were a group of adventurers. Oh, but you have met them. Did they tell you what he did? Where they found him? Who he knows? No, only that his plans and associates died with his goals. Speaking what I what I gather do you have he, other members of the Arcane Brotherhood in in this facility? No, prisoner two three seven would be the only one. And is four eighty four the only uh, devil worshipper that got transferred here? Yes, he was brought here from Waterdeep. I gather you had something to do with that. Yes. I exposed him. Ah, well, fine work you did. Thank you. If it's uh, not a breach of any confidences you must hold, uh, which devil worshipper is he? Uh, specifically, which devil was he worshipping? Uh, let me think. I do believe it was a dispater, if my memory serves. Okay, well, that's good. I ask, because uh, apparently this group ran into another, ran into this avarice before. Unfortunately, I wasn't with them at the time, and that by the description they gave, she's working with elements of the cult of Levistus. This is troubling. Yeah, Arcane Brotherhood, Infernal Cults, Netherese cities, you, you can see why we are concerned. Indeed. Well, if you happen to need any assistance in incarceration of them, I believe the Lord's Alliance can always assist. Well, if any of them deign to be taken alive... We, uh, I don't think any of us would have any problems turning them over to your care. Excellent. Well then, if your business here is concluded, we can host you for at most two days before you venture out again. We would like to stay the night after that we'll be going. Of course. That being said, my guards will still have to hold on to your possessions until you physically leave the premises. Of course. That's not a problem. All right. Just uh, warned, a quick question is, um, should there be any developments? And uh, if we have any further questions for the prisoner, uh, would you be opposed to us returning to ask those questions? Of course not. Should there be further developments, you are welcome back here to continue the interview. Thank you.
Well, that seemed like it was mostly a bust. He pretty much just told us what he, we already knew. Indeed. Uh, Warden, there is actually one thing I just uh, thought of. Do you exercise the prisoners at all? Yes, there's a courtyard. When's the next time uh, 237 will be exercised? That is not information I can give you. Okay. Does he, he keeps personal effects in his cell, correct? Diaries, books, journals, things like that. No, we specifically have to avoid giving them such implements. Spellcaster or something? Does he have any personal effects in, in his cell? Or is it strictly just bed and water trough and chamber pot? Bed, water pot, chamber trough, spare set of clothes. How often do you this... search their uh, rooms? God damn it, Under, you're really making me dig through this fucking security system. <laughs> Warden, the reason I ask, and I understand that you may not be willing to divulge those details, is he may have written down the answers to some of the questions we had for him, but that he refused to answer. And so I was wondering if he had any personal effects the next time he was exercised, if we could get access to them to see if uh, potentially he had done so. Should we find anything during a search related to this, we will let you know. Appreciate Outside of that, we have not yet found anything. I have a question. When he was, like, brought here, did they, like, send stuff? Like, because certainly when he was captured, maybe he had something then, and it might be somewhere. If I understand what you're getting at, such as a spell book or important information, no, we do not keep those at this facility. It would be a little foolhardy to keep a potent spellcaster's spell book at the same location where they're kept prisoner, should they somehow manage to get access to it. Right. Mm. I don't suppose you would know, like, where that would be stored. Like, in another, a different specific, specific facility? You'd have to head down to Neverwinter for that. That being said, it is also a secure facility. Alright, I have returned. Indeed, but uh, should it come to it, would you be willing to uh, give us a letter of introduction so that we might uh, go through his effects and see if he had information regarding this? As you can tell, we're both on the side of angels here. Give me a persuasion check at advantage. I'll see what I can do, but I cannot think of a reason why not. Thanks. Do you know where he, where his base of operations was, or know anyone who would know? Well, he was from Waterdeep, wasn't he? But wasn't he captured in Ten Town? So he might have like had a forward operating base here. No, four eighty four was in Waterdeep. That was the guy I exposed. I imagine most of the people in Revel's End aren't from Ten Towns. They're just imprisoned up here for security. Yeah, it turns out Ten Towns actually has like a insane uh, supermax prisoners per capita rating in its population. 10% of all of Ten Towns will eventually end up in a supermax. Um, in all seriousness, though, um... No, she does not know the location of where his previous base was. Uh, 
Do we know who captured him and where they might be? I'm afraid I do not know the names of the adventurers responsible for his uh, downfall. Do you have any other questions? I'm afraid I don't exactly uh, know everything about this man. At least not in the line of questions you seem to be asking. I can't think of anything right now. Thanks. Uh, Matt Sequidor, would you happen to know if uh, Lonelywood needs any help? Lonelywood? Something that uh, might fit our line of work. I'm afraid I wouldn't know. Uh, we don't receive a lot of traffic from Ten Towns. And even then, based on the name Lonelywood, I imagine it doesn't receive much traffic to begin with. Just checking. I can't think of anything else. I think that's all, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I think that's all we got. Indeed. Well, you're welcome to stay the night in the spare quarters present here. After that, I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to leave. All right, well, I think we'd make our way to those spare quarters and start spending yeah. the night there. Indeed, you guys are escorted over there. Oh, how many hours do we have just to spare? They offered us two days, but I said we would leave in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be about five hours. I'm sorry, four hours. Four hours remaining till night. I don't believe a herbalism kit can be used to make poisons. Would they yes, be opposed to me having it? Oh, never mind then. Okay. Let me put it this way. If you can look at the item and go, I can think of a way to use it, they took it. Um... Okay, there is no weapon in the adventuring l kit that, that we would be allowed to keep, basically. <laughs> I, I could weaponize just about any of it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, if you ever tried to write a letter to prisoners, it's not easy. Have you? Yeah, they don't even let you use marker because they're afraid that the prisoners will try to huff it. <laughs> I'm not making that up. Crayon. <laughs> no, I just wrote in like ballpoint pen. Yeah. No, they don't like Making it when people send crayon pen letters. It's a pen and a plastic tube around it. Prisoners can scrape the wax off the paper, and paraffin, if you fold it and press it enough time, can be used to make a, a pointed tip. Use the paper then as the base, and you can make a shiv out of that. Wow, you gotta be really patient to do that. This is a super <laughs> they nice got, facility. They, have they got the time. nothing but time. <laughs> yep. Like, I shit you not, there was a legitimate case where a prisoner in the U.S. made a shiv out of toilet paper. I gotta give that credit. Like, damn, that's, that's creative. A guy made a bat out of a, a newspaper. Yeah, it's the same concept, just smaller and a little more pointed. He took the Sunday paper, he took it into his cell, 
and he rolled it and rolled it and rolled it and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until he rolled that whole that whole pen up into the size of half dollar. It was as sturdy as a bat. He walked out and cracked somebody in the head with it. Yeah, every sure tool, for- every toolkit it would be trivial to it would be trivial to weaponize. Most of the adventuring kit would be trivial to, to weaponize, and the stuff that isn't mm-hmm. trivial could easily be done by someone with time in a super max. Yep. Uh, hell, if you look at um what half the spell casting components for some spells are, you realize why a lot of super max prisons are all also anti magic field. Like I think you can create like how how many different like fourth level spells with literal sweat. That's not the issue you need to worry about, Gilbert, in making a magical supermax. Oh, I'm I, I'm aware. It's it's one of the examples I remember seeing. Like, there's there's a lot of spells in D and D that have such simplistic requirements that it'd be very easy to get your hands on the components. You know, especially in a society that still uses like torches, getting ash wouldn't be too difficult. Well, there are a hundred, over a hundred spells that just don't require material components at all. Mm-hmm. Indeed. All right. That being said, you guys do anything during the long rest or downtime? No, no I don't think so. Nothing I can do, really. All right. Unless your long rest concludes. Restful, but ultimately not the most productive venture. Well, at least we didn't piss off all the guards and, you know, get all arrested and have horrible things happen to us. Hey, I mean, D&D if... still goes on for about another 15-20 uh, minutes, so you can always try. <laughs> Is there if a chair in tell these me. spare quarters? Yes. So four legs, so we got four clubs between the, between us. What are you talking about? I'm always armed. <laughs> nah. Oh no, they took your limbs. They'll cast a regenerate spell on you when you leave. <laughs> Sorry, I just remember a web comic that did that. Well, I, I think once morning comes, wounds we got... is a verbal and somatic only spell. Hmm. Well, anyway, I think once morning comes, we'd start making our way out of here. Yep. Yeah. And get our equipment and uh, take our leave. Is there any issue with animals. getting our equipment back? There is not. Okay. D- they didn't also, fuck with it. Correct. No one fucked with anything. Your laser gun is still in perfect condition. We'll load that back up before I forget, after we leave. And missing one shot. You can see them holding a funeral for a guard out in the court. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I intentionally uh, took out the ammunition to prevent I, that from happening. I, I know, I know. I'm making a joke. One of the ammo cases is missing. They're holding a funeral for six guards. <laughs> you know, the, the, the uh, battery accidentally broke. All right. And as we're leaving, I pull out the detonator. Click. The building explodes behind you, raining rocks all over the place. The rocks crumble. All the party members, you all die. There we go. Perfect. Well, that was unfortunate. That didn't lead uh, to anything. Since Lonely Woods close here, why don't we uh, see if they have any work for us? on our way back to civilization. Yeah, well, we could also try what I said we wouldn't try, and just go wandering into the Reghead Glacier. Why don't we, uh, check out Lonelywood first? It's more convenient, and then we can do that. For now. Yeah, we'll come back to that.
All right, so <clears throat> just so I can actually prep something ahead of time for next week, where are you guys going? Uh, that's a um, good question. We didn't really get any leads from this guy. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, we could have... Did did the warden give me the uh, letter of introduction? For... For that secure facility down south in Neverwinter? Could head there. See if he's oh, a journal. No, we can't. Anything. I'm sorry, I think I misunderstood what you're saying. Um... First of all, outside of the, the the hard barrier on that edge of the map, we're just we're just gonna pretend that part doesn't exist. Oh okay. my! This is an extra-dimensional plane, like I'm Ravenloft. Not, I'm not I'm not rendering an off-map location. There's an invisible wall there. <laughs> we all go to the city of Neverwinter. <laughs> If that's not an option, why don't we try a Lonelywood? If nothing's there, then we can go to, uh, was it Deep East, Regheads End or whatever? I'll, I'll say this, guys. Literally everything that you're looking for can be found on this map. Someone. We just need some, someone with better information who's willing to give it to us. It, it also would help if whenever we try to interrogate people, we don't all like roll like threes and shit. Hey, I mean, I rolled a 23, and he still wouldn't tell me, so... Yep. Which yeah. means he wasn't going to tell me no matter what I rolled, pretty much, unless I net 20 Actually, it's Maybe. because the entire thing was a challenge. What, like a group challenge? A series of, yeah, functionally a series of skill challenges. That and I gotta be honest, he's kind of a cunt. Yeah, I gathered as much. Well, why don't we try to put together the other information we had? There was there was some like Duergar king who was building a dragon out of like glass or something. The what? Didn't didn't I hear about this? You mean the <laughs> You mean the plot thing that no one's been paying attention to because you're all obsessed with weather control devices? Yeah, that that's a thing. Yeah, well I'm trying to remember what we know about it because this I didn't know. It's the write first it I've heard of this. It's the first I've heard of this. <laughs> what are we talking about? Wait, there's a motherfucking glass dragon somewhere? Rosnia, you were here for this. Glass dragon? I don't recall a glass dragon. I remember like, the like, goblins. Who is this shit on never... some weather control device? I want to find a glass dragon, goddammit. Is this where you're proposing that we go? No, I don't know where to go. Oh. All, All right. I remember is getting right. that, that piece of so plot information from somebody. All right, so give me a second. I'll flip back to it, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll get you guys the notes for it. One second. God, Sat Saturday campaign. We forget something. I don't know what's going on, guys. I guess you forgot. Mon we, uh, Monday night. Hold on, guys. I'll get the fucking notes. We uh we really screwed that up. In interrogation, that guy, didn't we? We went in there with no strategy of how to make a prisoner talk. Well, we had no way to make the prisoner talk. We can't threaten him, and the warden refused to do anything. We have, like, no influence with this guy other than just being able to talk his ear off. If everybody yeah. would have went along with it, I could have talked. I, I would have convinced him to talk. Only one, person, been, uh, having only one person had character. to go along with that, and it was the warden, and she refused to. That's true. Lawful yeah, HR could have just bypassed all this, but unfortunately, you know. Yeah, there was smart. there was nothing we could do to that guy. And oh man, like... if if AGR was here, <laughs> that's what I was thinking the whole time. Like, I wish that guy who can fucking read minds was here. That would be really useful right now. <laughs> yeah, detect thoughts is like tailor made for interrogations, and yep. none of us have it. Ex <laughs> oh my god, my other character has it. <laughs> Not to oh mention that his character. Not to mention his character is a like is just it, 
Im- the embodiment of a security violation here. I'll, I'll yep. be honest, so is my character. True. True. No, so, even though they took the scrolls, I could still have cast Misty Step inf- and Inflict Wounds without any material components. All right. I had so, Thunderway ready to go. You guys learned the following information when uh, Kryak, or not Kryak, Kukra, and um, AGR's character went exploring in. Um, Care Conig? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Care Dinaval. You know, the place where those demon, uh, devil worshippers were? Mm-hmm. And also Everest. Yep. Very specifically. You encountered a very old dwarf woman who let you know about a Durgar warlord named Zardarok Sunblight and that he wishes to conquer Icewind Dale and create the first Durgar surface kingdom. I remember that. I remember a fucking dragon. A glass dragon. Yeah, I thought we got that from I'm, somewhere I'm, else. Hold up, hold up, guys. Um, let's see. A, uh, where is it? Where is it? I'll give you an Aldrell knew about this. Grailnor does not. Yeah, this information we got in Care something, Care Denival or Care Kong. Care Denival. Yep, I got him here as some warlord fuck that we need to oof question mark. And we needed to talk to uh, Cardia, Card Irot. All right, all right. So, yeah. Zodrak Sunblight, a Durgar warlord, wanting to conquer Icewind Dale. That he has a fortress somewhere on the surface and wishes to create the first Durgar surface kingdom. And his fortress contains a uh, powerful, still beating heart of a red dragon. That was the Um, dragon. That and the uh, soothsayer also said that, um, you know, if someone moves to challenge Zardarok too soon, they will most certainly die. Well, we took our sweet time uh, after getting our information. 
it could be fun uh, assaulting a fortress. Yeah, if we knew where it was. Indeed. If only, if only you guys knew where it was. Yeah, if only Valdra was still here, because he knew, he knew where it was. What? Uh, well, it begins with suh, it ends with duh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Never mind. I also, yeah, that too. Yeah, sp yeah, spine of the world. Yeah, another really massive fucking area. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, you'd be if it were bound to the map, it would be quicker to search the glacier. Yep. Back to the weather control device quest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let, let me put it this way, guys. I, I, I will tell you this. The way, remember, this is a module, so everything is designed to tie together at some point. At you know, think of it this way: continuing to advance in any direction will result in you reaching the same points eventually. How that unfolds, though, will depend on, you know, where you choose to go and what you choose to do. Okay, let's the go back to Bridge and spend the next three levels helping old man Cletus fix his weather vane. And then everybody died from starvation and the cold because the party did not stop Aril. Well, you know, we could always go to the Dwarven Valley and see if the Dwarves there have any information. Oh, we also need to keep our eyes on reindeer tracks when we're traveling. If this stuff is uh, to be believed, the rumors, they would know a lot of the information that we're looking for. Oh yeah, Maybe. the Redhead Nomads. Yeah. A.K.A. the not Sami. something else I'd recommend. Remember, I've thrown you a splattering of rumors. However, all the locations in Ten Towns, because there are still places you haven't been, would also be good places to look into. All right, well, then we can go to Lonelywood. Yeah, yeah sure. it's, it's right there. Lonelywood. Are we going to go through the woods to get to Lonelywood? That sounds yeah, exciting. Bunch of dicks and swim. <laughs> well, we could uh, we could go along the edge of the river. That sounds preferable to swimming. Swimming sounds like a good way to die. Alright, so I guess we do go there. Yep. Party. Alright, so the party departs on its way to Lonely Wood. And we'll call it there for the night. Alright.